Or be ready for this. Gonna be fun. You will not stand in my way. Frostborn. Hunger. This pleases me. I do not fear you, mortal. Your soul shall be mine. Don't make me laugh. You need the boot? Oh, I do. Fill a shredding, baby. Let the battle begin. <laughs> So hello and welcome to the 28th episode of Troll and HEC, a Heroes of the Storm podcast focused on esports and a member of the Trolls.gg Entertainment Network. I'm your host, Liquid, and I'm joined today as usual by Bags. How's it going, man? What's going on, dude? Happy to be here. Happy to finally be back online. Uh, I felt like I was on an island, a, a, a desolate island of no internet. <laughs> no internet. Sh- struggling, struggling on the mobile life for like four days. Um, but... We're back. And we're we've back. got a new overlay, I see. So we have a new overlay. It's still crazy. work in progress. It's sharp, dude. Work someone, in progress. Someone changed the uh, someone changed the troll's hair. What's a, he's, he? He got it dyed. It'll all make sense. Work in progress. Um, but we have a special day. It's Saturday. We don't normally do this, and we have a special guest. We have DB Smiley, who always publishes and well, world Elo rankings, and then uh, rankings within countries, and does all sorts of great, great, great analytical stuff about who's better than who. How's it going, man? It's going all right. It's been uh, it's been kind of a nice, relaxing uh, break. So work starts. So I, I teach for a living. So work starts up next week. But uh, take, taking this week, just relaxed a bit, caught up on my video game backlog, etc. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. Um, all right. So let's just we're just going to jump. Well, we're not going to just jump right in because I want to go ahead. And before I do that, <laughs> I almost threw myself off because it's a Saturday. And I'm like a little out of whack. I want to thank our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash trolls gg we do share that with all of the trolls gg stuff that includes entry level esports troll uh the nexus trolls troll and hcc all of our writers all that stuff goes to help us bring you better and more content so if you want a way to support us that is one of the best ways to support us um we also have a troll of the week this week it is ghost bear ghost bear is always around in our discord always around in in uh troll twitch chat just being a cool dude and uh basically talking about whatever happens to cross his mind so thank you ghost bear all right and with that bags i'm sorry i was stressed and trying to get the overlays all set up so i don't have all the bumpers we're just gonna jump into an interview without the bumper this time it's 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 all right buddy don't worry about it <laughs> um but so we're gonna go ahead we have a couple of questions that um we've come up with for db that we want to go through kind of before we go into all the uh polls and the elo and all that stuff um go ahead bags man i'm gonna let you take some of these all right. Sorry, I was typing in Twitch chat, but I'm ready for you. Um, DB, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here, man. Um, I loved what you did with 323 Weekly. I, I miss it, but I understand that it is a, it's a time, it's a time mm-hmm. thing, I, and I get that. So for those of you that don't know you, could you kind of uh, introduce yourself and, and what you do for the uh, Heroes community, and then we'll, we'll kind of we'll dig into that a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, uh, so for the most part, I kind of, in my self-aggrandizing narcissism, kind of try to try to fill the role of the Nate Silver of HGC, so that if you're not familiar, Nate, Nate Silver of uh, 538. So I do, um, I do a lot of stats on heroes, specifically in terms of trying to map out, like, oh, what are the odds that Gale Force Esports makes the western clash in phase two uh you know how do those odds change week to week based on who they win to who they lose to etc um and so i actually first started posting these things on reddit and this was actually it was weird because i didn't start with oh here's elo ratings and then here's the odds of teams making uh at the time it was the first western clash last year Uh, i started out just by Saying like, oh, well, if we assume 50-50 odds, here's a Monte Carlo simulation. And I'm like, yeah, but 50-50 is stupid because, you know, Gale Force was much more likely to beat, um, you know, some of the lower teams in NA. So then adjusting the odds and that that naturally led into to doing ELO stuff. But so that's most of what I do. And it's really kind of stupid and mathy, but it I enjoy it. You are the resident number cruncher of the Heroes community, man, uh, so... I, I wouldn't I, – there are people who do better statistical work than me. I'm just filling my niche, which is – my statistics are actually fairly naive. 
Um, but I, you know, naive models can often produce as accurate or often better results than uh, sophisticated models. So, yeah. I, I like the modeling you do. Um, I'm not gonna lie. like I've we've used it a number of times on these shows. Um, we there's something to be said about that, right? If you look, there are, there may be other better statisticians out there, but if you look at what's being provided to the heroes esports community as a whole, like your numbers actually tend to be the ones that are um, frequently correct and most frequently published in a way that people can. So there's something. Well, thank you. I that. appreciate that. You're thank welcome. you. I I really enjoy it. I really enjoy the content you put out um, specifically because I used to, I don't think it's part of ESPN had, uh, had big budget cuts recently, but they used to do, oh, yeah. was, I think it was 538. And mm -hmm. uh, I think, and I, I can't remember. I think it was Bill Barnwell used to do a part with uh, Grant land where they would do yeah. uh, ELO ratings for either for soccer or, or football. And I used to follow them or, or basketball even. And they would always, you know, an article would accompany it. And to me, that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, as I well mean, that, as they that direct, those articles directly inspired what I do, uh, specifically 538. I, um, you know, it, 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 I actually, so I, I teach computer science for a living and I do a software engineering class. And this spring, uh, one of the projects that I'll do inevitably will be, okay, here's the NCAA tournament, simulate it. And like write a simulator for it, uh, and and allow these different strategies to be used. And it's silly things like always pick the favorite coin flip bracket, etc. But it's um, you know, another one is choose your favorite team. So you you know, they, but anyway, the whole idea I give them like here's five thirty eight. Here's how they model it. Like do something like that. Um, so it, it's it's I use that website quite a bit because I'm overly obsessed with numbers. <laughs> i uh i believe in uh the the old Yu-Gi-Oh phrase of go with the uh, go with your heart you know believe in the heart of the cards so i i sometimes butt head with the numbers but <laughs> i used to no. so when we used to do um 323 weekly i used to butt heads with the numbers all the time because i'm like no 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 uh at the time i think it was gale force wasn't doing that and i'm like i believe i believe these guys can win this weekend and it was not it did not work that way <laughs> well so, I mean, upsets do happen. So this is, people are not naturally in tune to doing a good job interpreting numbers. Uh, this is just, you know, this, it's the gambler's fallacy. We all have it born within us. Uh, so, for example, when 538, and hopefully I don't derail the podcast too much when I say this, when 538 said Donald Trump only had a 30% chance of winning on election night, that doesn't mean Hillary Clinton's going to win the election. Right. Things that happen 30% of the time happen all the time. And so whenever I say like, oh, well, Gale Force has a 50% chance of making the Western clash and that makes them the highest team in North America because the next team is like 30%, that doesn't mean Gale Force is going to the Western clash. Right. It means flip a coin. If it's tails, Gale Force doesn't go to the Western clash. And, and I think that happened earlier in the season. Um so that's one thing I always want to be clear is when I'm talking about these these win rates and things like that, this is all probabilistic. Uh, so it's not – basically if a team wins – if I let's say I, there's eight games and they all have like 50 to, 55 to 60% chance of, of the home team winning and the, and the home team wins all four of those games. Well, that would actually say my model's bad, even though I predicted them to win all four games. Right. right. Because that you, you would expect that uncertainty to show up. You would expect the coin to land tails one time. And the fact that it never did means that I probably undervalued the quality of the home teams and overvalued the quality of the away team. So my model was actually wrong, even though the predictions were right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean that's that's unfortunately that's how it works. But uh, I, I like the um, parallel to it's the gambler's belief, right? I, I can beat these odds, right? There's always mm -hmm. a chance I can beat these odds, and and that's someone's got to win the lottery, right? Exactly. That's a great My way. My mother of bought at a it. ticket for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I like. I understand what, what? that you're not going to win the lottery, but when the money gets that high, even I have to buy a ticket. My wife's like, "Why? Like you're not going to win?" It's like because there's a chance. 
There's so always saying, a chance. So you say I'm just going to let this face palm speak for itself. Here. <laughs> I okay. understand logically that there's not, but I don't know. It's like if I don't buy the ticket, I definitely don't win the money. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's fair. <laughs> this is why I was always picking GFE when we were doing the show. <laughs> yep. All right. We, we, we can move past that, though. Um, I don't know where you left off, man. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I guess what I want to do is these – we are going to talk about preseason power rankings on the show tonight. The basis of that is going to be your ELO ratings. For those that don't know, what is what, what is ELO? How did it get its start? Yeah. Can you fill so- us in? Yeah, so one of the one of the things that comes up is ELO is not an acronym or an abbreviation. ELO is a dude. His name is Arpod ELO. His last name was ELO. Hungarian chess player. And what happened was he came up with a statistical model to rank chess players, um, you know, numerically. So you could, even two chess players who had never played each other, by looking at things like common opponents, you can determine how likely it is one chess player beats another. And, I, and this is particularly important in chess because in chess, it's not like... I, I would say chess is actually much more akin to how HGC was before 2017, where there were these kind of ad hoc tournaments. Right. And yeah, it all coalesced into a world championship at the end. But you know, before, before league play, it was just kind of like, oh, here's a regional and this is where it's at. And here are the dates for the qualifiers. And you would have basically new teams forming every time. Well, in chess, of course, it, there wasn't league play. There wasn't any like round robin style or anything. It was just you played who you played in tournament play. And so you needed to be able to rank the teams or rank the teams, rank the chess players uh, somehow systematically to seed them in these tournaments because, you know, you don't want to like you're not going to put you know, the two best college basketball teams playing each other in the first round of the NCAA tournament. You know, you want them to play in the championship. Um, so that's kind of where it got started. Now, it's a fairly naive model, um, but ultimately the idea is over time, players approach their correct rating just by how they win and lose. So an example is uh, it, it's just a raw number. Now, I think I tend to keep the average for HGC at 1,500. Numbers entirely arbitrary. I can make the average zero. I can make the average pi. I can make it uh, anything. 1,500 right, so kinda... is just it looks good on paper. So that's the number I picked. Uh, it, it's also there's some traditional reasons 1,500 is considered an average uh, chess player probably the average chess enthusiast, I would say. Um, so that it, it's purely arbitrary. All that matters is what's the difference between the favorite and the underdog. So take two chess players, 2,100 and 2,000. That's a difference of 100. What that means is the favorite in a single game is about 64% chance expected to win. So if the... If the, if the two players played 100 times, you would expect about 64 wins for the favorite, about 36 wins for the underdog. That's all it means. And again, it, it's just that it's that difference that matters. Now, if you double that difference, so you go to 200, now you're talking about about a 75, 76% chance of the favorite winning. Um, what if you have and, a 1,000 yeah. point difference? If you have a thousand point difference, you, you're, I mean, obviously it never hits a hundred percent because right, it, right. it's, so it, 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 it uh, you know, one hundreds in, in asymptote there. If, if I can, if I can break out uh, that word, that'll give people nightmares of geometry <laughs> back from high school. Um, but <laughs> like the largest difference I think I have in HGC right now is akin to uh, about what? 500, Oh, 700, no, 650. Right. So that would equate to in a single game, you know, if you took red canids from Latin America and put them against KSV Black, you would expect KSV Black in a single game to win, you know, probably 97, 98% of the time. Okay. But again, that's a single game. Now, right, right, right. a few series and hots are, are played. In fact, I don't think any have been uh, meaningfully played other than like opening rounds of HCC Open Division. Right. 
So the thing is, that's a single match. But let's say that to a best of five. So again, going back to 100 difference, 64% chance the favorite wins. Well, when you simulate a best of three, because you're going to win 64% of the time, doing a best of three actually increases the odds of you winning the series up to 70.5%. Right. You play a best of five, it goes to 75%. Um, so this is why, like, specifically the NBA, the playoffs of the NBA are so predictable relative to other sports because in the NBA you have the top teams are much higher much, much better than the next tier of teams. Right. You know, the Golden State Warriors are way better than everyone else. But even then you think, oh, but what, you know, someone could get lucky. Well, yeah, someone could get lucky and beat them in a game, but beating them in a best of seven series just becomes extreme. I mean, take an example of, okay, let's say, let's say you were expected to win 30 or let's say 25% of the time. So you play four games, you would win one. Well, to win a best of five series, that only go that drops down if you have a twenty five percent chance of winning a game. That drops down to about a ten percent chance. Okay. Okay. So it's it's it the best of five nature of the season kind of exacerbates those changes. But that's also why best of three is actually more chaotic. It's why when there's a best of three, you know, um, roll twenty is able to beat uh, uh, who who was it? Uh, Tempest, yes. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. Tempest. Even though. Probably on paper, Tempest may have been the better team, but Roll Twenty was particularly hot in that tournament. Right. Um, you know, there's certainly a lot of emotion to play just from those, uh, just from the videos of Glaurong shouting very, very <laughs> Um But no, I mean, they, they put together a great game. If you play a hundred games, you know that I doubt Roll Twenty would have won. Would have won fifty. Right. Just sense. because of the state of North America, not 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 as any slight on them. Right. It just is. It is what it is. Right. Yeah. All right. Um. So, what brought you into heroes? Uh. So I've kind of bounced from, I I. Up until I got to grad school, I never really played any one game like particularly religiously, other than maybe the college football games. Um. Which don't exist anymore. So maybe that's, that's yeah. I was part. just gonna say that they don't make. Uh, so I, I, my first year of grad, no, my second year of grad school, I started playing. As you can see, my cat's jumping on the desk <laughs> behind me. Um, I started playing Star Wars: The Old Republic. I played that as kind of a harder core raider for about three years uh, with different guilds. But then I actually enjoyed raiding, so I had to leave Star Wars: The Old Republic because it doesn't have that anymore. Right. Um, and then I kind of bounced around because I didn't really want to play another MMO. And kind of on a whim, I tried League of Legends and just didn't like it. Uh, so I tried HOTS. And right as I started trying it, I remember like getting really addicted. I stayed up until like four in the morning playing, which is something wow. I hadn't done with a video game since Mass Effect 2. Okay. Uh, you know, and so, hi. Um, and so I really fell in, kind of fell in love with the game. And around that time, that was when Heroes of the Dorm happened. So the university I was at at the time was actually in it. Um, and they didn't, they didn't do particularly well. But <laughs> I, I kind of, I started watching and kind of enjoying the, oh, so I'm just now learning this game, but here's what it looks like at top level play. Right. And um, so that's actually, that was Heroes of the Dorm 2016. Okay. And, um... That was, um, you know, the team that won that, Arizona State, had Michael Udall, Akaface, um, but also Rafflecopter was in the final four with uh, University of Tennessee. Right. Yep. And so just because I had seen those players, it was a natural extension to then kind of become a Gale Force fan, follow that team for a while. Um, and uh, so I just, I started following that. Uh, around... I got kind of hooked on it. I, I started that right as I was finishing my uh, my PhD before I, I started my job, and it was kind of nice because then I had HG. Well, the not the league play, but the you know the tournament style. It was the time I had that to watch over the summer. So right. a thing about me is I'm a huge college football and college basketball fan, and neither of those play in the summer. So the summer has always been incredibly boring for me. 
So I picked I picked up Hots. I was like, oh, this is what I'm just going to watch this summer. I'm going to watch all the qualifiers. Going to get to learn all the teams. And then the league play started up, and I just I I thoroughly have enjoyed watching that. So that's kind of what led to me, uh, you know, going this route. Okay. Um. So we're gonna get into more in depth on the the Elo and the ratings and the where the media mm-hmm. put everybody, but. I did want to ask you, we had a bunch of new teams come in um, through Crucible in both NA and EU. And and then, like, how how did you come up with where they end up landing in the in the system? Right. So this this is always difficult because some teams come in and they're brand new and they do really well beyond the game was a brand new team in China with no players that I had seen in like none of the individual players that I was aware of had played on previous Chinese HTC teams. Right. And they finished third in their region and they actually looked really good. Um, then you have new teams like, uh, Wukong gaming. Right, right, right. Came in and just didn't like, I think they, I I don't think they want a map. They may have won. No, they won one map. They, they definitely won one against won one Kudos map. Top, right? Who was right. also kind of a bottom. And that was it. And that was like in the first half of the phase. Right. Um, you know, and then you have a new team come in like Zealots, and they're middle of the pack, but then they get on a hot streak at the end, and they look, you know, much, much better than probably would have been expected. Then you have a team like Even in Death. I, it, and so generally where I want to put that team because it's it's unpredictable, it's unlikely a new team's going to move up and like move up to the top five. Right. I don't see that happening. So what I do though is, in order to give them the shortest possible, the shortest average distance, is I put them kind of in the middle of the pack. Now that's not the same as putting them at the average because the average of all teams Elo Elo is a zero sum rating system. Right. So it's always fifteen hundred the way I maintain it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I so last season I put that at 1500 and it ended up taking too long to adjust. So I dropped that to rather than the average, the median. And so I think this this time around that's 1440, where the average is 1500. So a little bit below average. But the reason is it's not a bell curve. It's not an even bell curve. There's like four or five extreme outliers at the top. And then, like, KSV Black is an outlier of the outliers. Right, But KSV right. Black is way, way above everyone else. Right, right. And so because of that, keep in mind, it's a zero-sum game. So if they have, you know, 450 points above 1,500, well, on average, that means the other, you know, 31 teams are have lost about 15 points to them. Okay. So ultimately, because of that skew, I don't put them in the average. I put them kind of close to the median. Um, so I think that put them at 1440 this time yes. around. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and that's why I was curious, like, how they ended up at 1440. Um, just trying to figure out the logic there. It makes sense as you explain it, right? But Right. I, like, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, so I can't I, wait. I guess what I would stress is when we when we do get around to looking at the ELO ratings, which I'm sure we will at some point, yep. I am not saying that these are accurate. Uh, and then the biggest <laughs> reason for that is we're recovering from a lot of roster changes, but also we're coming off international play. Yes. So the ratings are most accurate, I think, going into international play, and they're less accurate coming out. And 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 I can get into why that's the case. Um if you would like, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait until I get prompted on that question. Yeah, before well, I, ran. I know we're going to get there when we go yeah. through the NA stuff and like where some of those teams ended up. So yes, we will. We definitely will cover that. All right. Um, I think the last question uh, bags and I are huge on the amateur stuff. We, we always talk about um, making sure you sign up, making sure you, you participate, making sure you support it, however you want to do it. Um, and I know you're closely involved with Nexus gaming series. Yeah. Tell us about that. Is someone yeah, so, that's actually on the show tell us about that? Yeah, so it is a um, it's a amateur league, but kind of what the big the big thing that separates NGS from other uh, other community organized events is, and this is actually why I like it is that we we've, we've gone out of our way to create divisions with round robin scheduling 
Now that requires a large time investment from the captains uh, and from the players to do. So we like to say that this is a little bit less casual than, than some uh, alternatives, but that round robin scheduling actually makes it a lot more fun. You know, this is, you know, this is why, um, you know, you get to know the teams you're playing. You get to actually scout them and know their tendencies. Um, you get to learn their maps. But it's also a matter of once you play a team, like if it was a close game, like, oh, look, you just found a scrim partner. Right, right. Um, so I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, being part of NGS. Um, I've done a little bit of casting with it as well so i actually what uh what prompted you to start doing that oh i've i've i like to hear the sound of my own voice so just any (laughs) any any chance i get to do that i'll i'll tend to jump i'll tend to jump all over i i enjoy watching it and i i don't know i it's something fun to do uh i don't really go outside so if i'm gonna be inside i might as well find some way to be social that's one way to do it okay fair enough it's it's definitely it's an interesting concept. I know um, one of our writers, Dorsch, has talked to uh, I don't remember who it is now. I'm totally going blank about NGS and kind of gotten some points and um, you know we we try to encourage everybody to find mm-hmm. an amateur league that they like, whether it's NGS or one of the others. Like, there's stuff out yeah. there for you. And I should note, season three actually starts this next week, so I'm on a team called Sponsored by Rory which is kind of an inside joke for the league that is actually kind of depressing. Um, but yes. that's that's my favorite kind of comedy, is comedy in a dark place. I uh, <laughs> I didn't um, realize that was your name of your team. That's well, funny. so, I, I mean, this this was a guy who was... And, and the reason I, I don't... This was a guy who was scamming individuals in the league, and I don't want to go too much into the detail. The reason I, I'm willing to share that is it kind of gives me a leeway to say, like, even if you've played video games with someone for a year and a half, as I had with this individual, um, and even if they have a story that's been consistent for that year and a half, they may be scamming you. And I sent this individual uh, in the neighborhood of $500. Oh, man. uh, On the basis of he had a story involving uh cancer that was consistent for a year and a half uh he said his power bill or his power was cut off and he had this huge penalty and so this is this is this particular individual's mo and i i I don't want to go too much further into that but i just i want i want people to realize that um what i wanted the team name to be was fuck rory to death (laughs) <laughs> but NGS wouldn't let me use that, so we went with sponsored by Rorty, which was a bit more tongue in cheek. Right. That's anyway. No, and that's uh, we. In fact, um, that's how we got. That's not. I don't want to say that. Uh, that was Dorsch's first article about NGS. Was like, let's explain some of what happened because it blew up mm-hmm. right about that time that we started publishing articles. So, I, I've I heard the NGS side of the story. I never heard that part though, and that's yeah, that was news to me. So. I just I wanted to share that on, on that end just more as a cautionary tale. Yes, because like I, I was the like this is why I feel guilty about it and why I, I put a, some. No, I don't blame myself explicitly, but I put some of it on myself. I had been playing. This individual was on um, a team in an earlier league called Usual Suspects, and um, so I had played with him n- not not religiously, but like on and off for about a year and a half. And of course, since then the the guy has closed down the online accounts that we're aware of. But right. we're I, I'm not going to go into any further details at this time as to nope. what we're doing. Obviously, you don't have to. So, all right, let's move <laughs> on to some fun stuff. So, yes. Before I switch the scene and actually show people the slide that I did put together based on your numbers, uh, about uh, I want to say about a month ago, maybe a little less, you asked the media, the the hottest yeah. media. To yes. uh, be a part of a poll that you were going to do, uh, a power rankings poll. Mm-hmm. And you got a bunch of responses, and you put that all together. And that's what we're going to reveal right now. We're going to start with NA. But I want to set the stage a little bit. Not only is the NA power rankings poll data here, I also have the the world ELO rating in the next column over. So you can see where the Heroes Media ranks them and where – the current ELO system ranks them. Mm-hmm. Um, I should also point out that I put numbers in this thing as a media person. 
So Drum roll. I, I feel like I should definitely point that out. But here we go. All right. So here are the NA standings. Um, I There were a couple of things here that, like, surprised me. Um, but mm-hmm. for anybody that's listening on audio, I'm just going to go through the numbers real quick so you, you don't have to necessarily have the slide. Yeah, but that's the, true. The link to the slide is actually in the show notes, too, if you want to look at the, the show notes and the slide later after I publish this in all the normal places. But we have Team 12, uh, used to be Roll20, in at number one. Team Freedom in at number two. Tempo Storm in at number three. Gale Force Esports at number four. Space Station Gaming at number five. Old Gods at six. Heroes Hearth at seven. And LFM at eight. Now. There were... uh, no, I, I, th- I think you may have Did I'm... that. Reverse yeah, because Old Gods is at seven. I think Hero's Hearth was actually oh, you at did. five. Yep, yep, yep. Nope, he's right. I made a, a mistake there because you had him yeah, in it. Uh... Let me just. I'll, I'll read it down real quick because yep. I have the I have the slides or yeah, I have the spreadsheet it. in front of me. Uh, so it is uh, in North America. Uh, Team Twelve, previously known as World Roll Twenty, uh, was first place. Had seven first place votes. In second place, what barely was uh, Team Freedom ahead of Tempo Storm. Gale, uh, Gale Force Esports was fourth. Heroes Hearth Esports was fifth, uh, narrowly ahead of Space Station Gaming at sixth. Old Gods at seventh. And then uh, LFM Esports, you know, just due to the nature of how they got into HCC, was a unanimous uh, eighth pick. So the two things that really jumped out at me here um and you're right i i I had them correct on the show notes but i messed them up on the slides so my bad i I think you need to still switch space station you still gotta bump up heroes earth yeah one more do i no no no, they're fifth oh my god i'm a mess guys i'm a mess all right hashtag (laughs) Hashtag. (laughs) hey you know what here's what happens when you rush to get things ready um it looks beautiful right it (laughs) looks fantastic huh i just wish i had gotten them correct there all right um let me just jump in through what I thought was weird. Uh, now that I have fixed that, and let me F5 that. Go. All right, there we go. Beautiful. Right now. Okay, so here are the two things that jumped out at me. Uh, Tempo Storm and Team Freedom, like that one-tenth of a point difference between the two of them were like, man, that was really close. That well, was so like... when I originally did the poll, they were tied. But one of the people who, so to give an idea of how I reached out for this, I went to people who wrote specifically about HGC. So not Heroes of the Storm, but HGC. Now, there are a couple people I removed. So the uh, owner, uh, one of the co-owners of Heroes Hearth had voted in the poll, but I removed him because he's part of ownership of a team. Yeah. So there's a bias there. So I, I removed that. And so even someone like Cavalier Guest, who I absolutely respect in the media, like I wouldn't let him vote in this poll because he's the coach for Gale Force. Right. And it's, right. it's, it's hard. Um, like, how do you let that go? Right. Like, but then there was uh, other individuals. Two polls were, two ballots were submitted by people who um, they do hear as a storm content, but I haven't seen HGC content. So for now, they're probationary ballots, but okay. I didn't include them in the day I sent you. If I did include those two, Team Freedom and Tempo were tied. Wow. Okay. Yeah. They were I, tied exactly. And I think that'll be – it'll be interesting to see what happens there with Team Freedom and Tempo. I think those two are really close together. I think Freedom might have a, a slightly larger edge. But um, having said that, we'll have to see how it comes out. I'm I'm, right. I'm um, all aboard on the Team Freedom ahead of Tempo. Oh, I know you are. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm all aboard on that train. My – I – Tempo's going to be a train wreck. They are going to be that that car crash, burning fire car crash that you can't yeah. take your eyes off of. Calling it now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's so one I guess one thing I would note here is the world ELO ratings. This is when I this is where I, I went when I said that um like the the ratings coming out of an international event tend to be less accurate than going into it. So one of the things that whenever you're doing an ELO system Certain event, certain matches mean more than other matches. That is, uh, the what is the most a loss can shift a team's rating. And right. for HGC normal matches, I believe I have that at 30. That is to say that in a worst case scenario, KSV Black loses to Red Canids in the regular season, which obviously would never happen, but let's just roll with this. 
their rating would drop like 29.9. It wouldn't drop 30, but it would drop quite a bit right. for that one. For that, again, for a map loss, not for a best of five. So that's a single map. Right. Um, the thing is, is that at an international event, I actually, rather than the maximum being 30, it's 55 at BlizzCon and it's 45 at the Clashes. Okay. Now, why do I do this? It's because we all know right now North America is not as good as Europe or Korea at HOTS. It's getting better. It's it's It was much better at BlizzCon than it's been for the year and a half before it, I would say. Um, but it's still not there. And so the reason that you... Like, the World Cup does this as well for international soccer ELO ratings. World Cup games are worth more than a, a normal... Uh, match right and the reason for this is so like let's say that north america goes to the world cup and they lose to a bunch of you know teams from europe well then that means europe's average elo should be higher than north america's okay and because you only have you know typically two or three representatives at an international group from each region um basically those teams have to take the hit for their whole region so this is why uh, at you know team team twelve previously roll twenty they're probably the best team in North America. I am not saying they certainly are, but they probably are, and most people agreed with that. So why is their Elo rating lower? Well, that's because they underperformed at the uh, Gold Cup World Championship, and that means that North America's average has to drop. But there was only one North American team there to take the hit. Right. So as the season progresses, necessarily, I would, I would, necessarily, if Team Twelve wins, their rating will go up. But the key is, is that let's say that Team Twelve runs the table and wins every map in North America. Does that all of a sudden make them as good as KSV Black? No. Right. And so this is this is why Team 12's rating is lower. Plus, with the new teams, you know, Heroes Hearth and LFM are just assigned an arbitrary ELO. Right. You know, these these numbers are not accurate for their ELO ratings at the moment, is what I would say. Well, and I can't wait to see what happens as we go through, like, through the first set of clashes. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be really telling. The, the season up to the clash and then what happens at the clash and how that adjusts, adjusts the ELO ratings. Right. Um. I. So, other than that, I think... It was interesting to me, too. It seemed like everybody kind of picked... Gale Force was one of the teams that was kind of all over the place yeah. a little bit. Like, some people rated them high, some people rated them low. Um, yeah, I think I saw them... Uh, let me let me take a look at the summary data for responses. So I saw Gale Force as high as second from one person and mm -hmm. as low as seventh from one person. And otherwise, it was kind of a mix of... Third, fourth, and fifth. I think, ultimately and I fine. think I had them personally at fifth. Well, and if you compare that to some of the other ones, I don't know. I'm I'm only glancing at the screenshot, but I feel like they're the most varied out of the other teams. I could be wrong. I would actually say Heroes Hearth is is the most varied. Heroes right. Hearth, like the the plurality yeah. was a tie. Like four people said fifth four people said sixth but some people had them as high as third some people had them as low as seventh as i said before lfm was a unanimous number eight so no one else had a number eight and i and i i'm actually not surprised by that i think heroes hearth is the wild card in north america i think they could come out and look really really good and go to the clash like they reasonably i think could go to the Western Clash. I'm not saying whether or not that's likely. I'm saying if they did, I wouldn't be shocked. Whereas I would be more surprised if like old gods went to the Clash. Okay. When well, like and, and what's interesting? Well, that's the, uh, sorry, I was no, just gonna go say ahead, well, that's the thing. They're 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 the unknown, right? So like we know that they have a couple of former pros on the team. Mm -hmm. We we know that they dominated an open division, um, but we don't know how they stack up against right. the other HGC talents. So like that's the unknown. Like we know they're a really good team, but how good are they? We haven't seen mm. them play the, these these common opponents in the in the NAHGC. So it's are, it the potential is just is there that they could like exactly why you think they could you you can see them going to a clash because 
you could see potentially that could be a really strong team. No. But the the other thing is is we haven't seen him play these. T- the, how big so, of a jump is it from open division? Well, like I said, we could also see them crash and burn. Like if right, they, right, I, right. I I I am pretty sure they'll finish above LFM. But like if they finish seventh, that also would not shock me at all. Right. Um, and basically the only thing that would shock me is them finishing top two. But even then, like that, I, uh, you know, I, I would be more surprised than shocked. It wouldn't surprise me if they finished anywhere third to seventh. What's interesting for me, for them, so like I feel like they're a very unknown, but as soon as they got in, their ownership went, we're going to try and do all the things we think we need to do to try and make us successful. They've hired a handful of support staff, more than mm-hmm. probably any other team in the league so far has done. And they're definitely like, they're trying to set the team up like heroes heart the organization is doing what it can to set the organ the team up to be as successful as possible which to me is impressive and why i i rated them as highly as i did um i think i'm looking uh, oh that's e i I think i had them at sixth i want to say i'm pretty sure that's where i had them i had them behind gale force but ahead of old gods and lfm so And, well, and the other thing is we took this a month ago, right? They've announced a handful of changes since then. Um, It'll be interesting. They're going to be one of the the more interesting teams to watch, for sure, and just see what happens with them. No, no, the the poll went out after the rosters were set. Right, 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 but they didn't have the coach. uh, Oh, right, right. They didn't have the coach. Like, all the support staff. No, no, you're right, though. They didn't have the coach. They didn't have have Cawthon Luck, who I think is a great uh, coach for them. Yes. Uh, They've also... They've they've done some other things too, but um, I don't yeah. think we're allowed to talk about them on the, on the show. Yeah. Are we looking? <laughs> no, we're not. Um, Full okay. disclosure: um, I write at Heroes Hearth, yes. although I I don't I don't uh, get paid for the writing. I just do it because I have nothing better to do with my life, and I'm narcissistic enough. People think that I think people want to pay attention to me. So, so, I mean, so while we still have the slide up, guys, I, I wanted to ask you: um, we we have the media results here in front of us, but we don't yep. have what we personally would have done. Now, now. We can we can kind of go round table here. Do do any of you guys have any changes? Like, would you where would you move certain teams, if any? I think this is dead on. Ooh, I I, I still have Tempo Storm at number two over Team Freedom. I I I, I think Gale Force and Space Station. I go back and forth on, and it's it's not. I mean, there there's some degree of fandom there is is affecting that. I do really like uh, the changes roster wise that space station made and i am and i think tomster's a fantastic player i think he was actually probably the best individual player on lag force but i'm still kind of skeptical of his support play at times um so i i don't know how that will work out i mean i i could very easily be completely underestimating old gods and they could come out and do really well and surprise me, and then they could be like, "Eat it, smiley." No way. Suck <laughs> all. No way. But um, okay. and and that would be totally fair if they did. I they are... I'm extraordinarily skeptical of the roster changes they made at, at seemingly the last second. I think Iacona was one of the top five supports in North America, and I don't agree with the decision to have him removed from the team. I think uh, the 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 most of the heroes community probably agrees with you in that respect. Yeah. Um, and support is, by the way, a lacking role in North America right now. Yeah. There are, I think, three people who are playing a converted support role right now. Like, not even counting buds because he he converted, you know, more than a year so, ago. At the- so, so did collusion. I mean, the both. Yeah, of them- yeah. I mean, that, I'm not even counting those two because right. yeah. they've been playing it for over a year. Which collusion, by the way, is like I think he's. I said last year I think he's the most underrated player in North America, and I'm, I'm ecstatic he proved me correct because it makes me seem like I know things. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I like don't. the the one thing I could see changing, I could see Heroes Hearth moving up a little, but I, I, I think Tempo Storm is going to be interesting. Tempo Storm is either going to work great or Tempo Storm is going to not. So. Yeah. I think they could do the Gale Force thing, which is that they have really, really good results and they can't close out uh, consistently to finish in the number one or the number two slot. Okay. But I also think that the individual players are better 
than the individual players were on the Gale Force Super Team. Yes. Glaurong is, in my opinion, he's my favorite player in North America at, at the moment. Um, so it really comes down to like the super team formula. I'm, I'm skeptical and I have a healthy skepticism, but if it's going to work, I think this is the roster that makes it work. That's okay. not to say it's going to work. <laughs> if it works, if it works, this will be the reason work this time. And if it doesn't really, really work this time, no one should ever try it again. <laughs> you know, someone somewhere is going to try it again. That's just how it works. Oh no, they're, they're going to try it again. I'm just saying that they shouldn't. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. Are you guys ready to jump over to EU or you have another question on NA? Well, I, I've got I've got some comments. Just some minor, yeah, I've got some right. comments. So like I'm happy with the top three. Like I agree. I I don't personally I don't think the Temple when I said Temple Storm was gonna be a train wreck, I think they're just gonna finish number thir- number three in NA, which has gotta be considered a failure for that roster the way it's constructed. Right. But I, I think it's gonna be the third best team in, in North America. I think it's gonna be team twelve and team my boys at Team Freedom. I have a lot of faith in that roster. I would similar, actually similar to what happened with Gale Force at MSB last year. Yeah. Who who were clearly in a position to finish top two, and they had a couple surprising losses. No tomorrow, you know, and Team Freedom, um, they lost to an earlier in the phase, but the couple surprising losses mixed with then a loss to Roll Twenty, and they dropped out of the top two and didn't make mid season brawl. Like that wouldn't surprise or no, they they were the two seed and they lost to Roll Twenty in the playoff. That was it. Yeah. Like that sort of thing. I think is what you're getting at. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. And then, uh, like moving a little further down, I don't. The Gale, the new Gale Force roster is kind of just comes off as very. I, I'd like to be surprised, um, as it's a a a long, long-standing cornerstone org for Hots, but I it, the the roster as it's constructed comes off as very meh to me. Like it's mm. just like it's it's. I mean, it's, in fantasy football, we call that a jag. It's just another guy. And it's just another team here in Heroes right now. Never, that's like that's what when I look at that roster. Never so underestimate I would, the power of Cavalier guests to to get them on the yeah. track, though. I, I I will still argue, and I will probably get flagged for this. I still think Aka Face is the best support in NA, and I I know that there were some struggles with the team towards the end of last season. I think that there was certain. I mean, there was very certainly some. Um, I. This is not this is not me because I was writing for Gale Force at the time. So this is not me saying like I was in their comms and heard. No, I wasn't. <laughs> like I'm just a guy. I have never been in a calm with any pro player of any kind. Um, but I think there was just you could see that there was certainly some issues with the team, either not trusting each other or just having very different visions of what direction they wanted to go in. Yes. And I, th- I still, and I think that contributed to individual uh, poor play. But I, I, I would still say that if I were to make a fantasy team, while I put collusion in my all NA roster just because of his performance last season, I still think Ak is the best support in NA. All right, that's okay. that's a bold that's a bold statement, Cotton. <laughs> <laughs> bold statement. Um, yes, but I would I would flip flop Gale Force with Space Station. I would take Space Station from the sixth spot. I would plop them down there in the fourth. Whoa. I think they made some great changes. Really? I would put Gale Force in six, yep, and I would put Heroes Hurt, even Heroes Hurt, ahead of Gale Force. That's how I feel about that. I think Old Gods is either going to be seventh or eighth. I think they're a Crucible team again. I think it's just the new Lagif. I think both Superstars and Lagif were teams that had some issues internally, mm-hmm. and it's just more mixing oil and water it, it, that doesn't mix, and it's just going to be a mess still. I, I really do. I mean, um, Duna you know, and but, Caffeine again together. Not sound good we'll i don't know we'll see what happens i just think it's it's just rehashed parts man and it, we're not really building an improved product mm. i love hero physio i love the imported support roster that's now on lfm we had short steve on the show much respect i would like to be proven wrong but i don't see lfm getting out of seventh or eighth uh, i i i don't see them getting out of eighth i yeah. I think it's it's unfort and and this is saying like I like some of the players on that team who have who are actually it's kind of interesting there's actually some veterans on that team, yeah. but um, I uh, I I think it's even in death round two. Yeah, I it listen they've they've had two opportunities with that basically that exact roster uh, or four fifths mm-hmm. of it anyways to take down essentially the old gods roster. Uh, or at least a portion of it, and they haven't been able to do it. 
and I just don't see him. I, again, I don't see him being able to do it. And I've already said my piece about old gods, so mm. that's where they're that's where they're going to end up, man. All right. Fortunately. Okay. Let's jump into EU. That should be fun. Oh man, yeah. I love I I love this. This is where I'm just going to have to sit awkwardly most of the time. <laughs> I have not had as much a chance to follow the team. So uh, here's I'm I'm just gonna before we even go through them all, um, I did throw the two B's determined logo back on for Team Expert because mm-hmm. Team Expert is no longer Team Expert. They have not announced what they're going to be that I could find. I checked again today while I was putting this together. So we're just gonna stick with two B's determined for now, just because it's easier. Um, okay, I don't think I have any of these wrong. Uh, I can check. Um, I, th- I think it looked right. Yep. Nope. Those are right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So again, for our listeners on the podcast, we have Dignitas in at number one, Fnatic at number two, two B's determined. That's the old team expert in at number three, Zealots at number four, tricked esport at five, team liquid at six, diamond skin at seven and leftovers. Uh, the brand new team from Open Division in at number eight. Thoughts? Anyone? I'm just like. Yeah, so I mean, this is one where I would say the ELO ratings are much more accurate than they were for NA, I think, relatively. Um, Diamond Skinned has always been weird in yes. terms of they've, they have always had a higher ELO rating than you would think. They're like, while they've been at the bottom of EU, they have not been. Like, the lower end of EU was never, like, even in death was an NA. The lower end in EU, while they finished, uh, I believe, 7th or 8th last time around, um, I can't remember who finished it, th- had them or good guys, Diamond Skin had impressive wins, and they actually had a lot of 2-3s against really good teams, or, you know, then they beat Fnatic. They were the only team to beat Fnatic in the regular season, which kind of just came out of the blue. So they're they're... EU is much deeper than the other regions. Yep. Uh, EU had a lot more, quote-unquote, seeding upsets last season. I don't see that changing this time around either. The one team I'm still very skeptical of, and I put them seventh, was Team Liquid. Yes. I I actually put them eight. I'm looking at it right now. Um, I think I put hard to... Yep, I... No, I put them six. Never mind. I was looking at the next one down. So yeah. they're they're in a weird spot. Uh, first of all, I agree that they're a definitely bottom three team. Mm-hmm. Um, Diamond Skin has always been in a weird change for, or in a weird place for me. Um, Leftovers, I think, has the ability to come in and if they can survive the first phase perform as well as zealots did in the second phase. Um, I think zealots ELO is really high, but I think that's based on uh, international. I I don't think they really need number nine there, but um, yeah, well, part of it is they had wins against teams who did well at international. So keep in mind, Europe had the highest ELO average, even much higher than Korea. Like, the average was like 50 points higher than Korea at the start of last phase. And so, you know, that's kind of a rising tide lifts all ships. I think now that ratio has dropped to it's two. That's the, that's the average ELO difference between Europe and Korea now. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I'm trying to think the other thing that is interesting to me, I think Fnatic can actually outperform dig once the roster settles in. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's a, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes during the season, right? Like, it as it stands right now, I think this is actually pretty close to how I would look at it. Um, yeah. I mean, the two performed extremely well at GCWC. Right. The, top four, the top four at GCWC were significantly better than everyone else by a very, very wide margin. And so, you know, the two Korean teams and the two European teams that were there are going to, uh, you know, are going to be the highest teams just because we're coming off the back of international play which as i said before it's rated higher so that the averages of the region shift right right um bags yes 
I'm still here. I was I was pulling up some uh, <laughs> some of the team rosters so I could keep them straight in my head. Okay. Uh, because we did have some we did have a lot of roster movement in the EU as well. Yes. And uh, it has been a while since we talked about them, and I don't have the flashcards that I I promised I'd make. So so I was pulling up some tabs. Okay. Um, when I look at this, I'm happy. It's so EU is the toughest region, right? It is the mm. absolute toughest region. These teams, um, especially like. I would say three through seven are the the difference between these teams is is very 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 finite. It's I very, think leftovers finite, could very, actually and, be in that group as well. Yeah, I, I would you think they can make the jump? I, I'm not I, saying my they, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be surprised they finished as high as three, but I think they could very well be like a zealots team uh, by the end of the year, which is to say mid tier. I mean that's the thing is EU EU is a lot like uh, you know. Shout out to the fact that a WVU basketball game is starting soon. Um, EU is kind of the Big 12 basketball of <laughs> of HOTS. There's the, no, the old, the there's no gimme games. There's no gimme games. Yes. Like, there's no team that you look at and we're like, okay, this week we get to relax a bit. The Western there, Conference there, of no the NBA? <laughs> right. I mean, that's... I, 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 I can't say much about the NBA, unfortunately. All right. Well, well can you say about the old Big East then? Can you can you make me happy? <laughs> I mean, no, no. The old Big East was great. I remember when WVU won it. It was best yeah, sports. Yeah, as a as a big Syracuse fan, I uh, yeah. shout out to the old Big East. I still remember that six overtime game. Anyway, off yes. topic. Off topic. Oh, but no, I, I agree. EU is is the most difficult. The the quality of play there is high. And there isn't a single – look. if you look at these eight rosters, you can't say, when we play this team, we win. Like, there is no – Dig can't say we can sit on our back heels when we play Diamond Skin or Leftovers. It, it, you just can't because there's always that good possibility they will come out and they will surprise you. Well, the good news, and it, and it was just mentioned in chat, is now with the way clashes are set up, when we have internationals – EU will probably, most likely, get to send a fourth team. So, well, it'll that. probably be a third team. I think it's still a third. Or a third for the midseason brawl, and, fourth and then a fourth team to BlizzCon. Which, yes, you know, and 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 almost certainly the same with Korea. I mean, yeah. just just given international results of late, and uh, that's that's not going to help NA or China catch up. But you know, hopefully they can do some of the legwork on their own. <laughs> But again, looking at this, if I had, you know, things that if there was something that jumped out to me, um, it's that I it sucks to put liquid where they where they are at number six. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is uh, I don't I don't know. It's just the 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 struggles that they had to go from like. They struggled. They was it that they didn't make the midseason brawl, I think they just missed the midseason brawl. Then they they kind of regrouped, made it to the clash, and then completely flamed out in the second half of phase two, and and you just don't know which team you're going to get. So they they made changes. It, uh, they were the longest standing roster. They made some changes, but they weren't like high profile changes, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But they they weren't. They picked up Sport Billy and Eternal. So I I, I think Sport Billy is a playmaker. Every every like I I mean I don't know as many EU players intimately as I do. Uh, intimately is not the right word. I don't know any player intimately. Um, <laughs> Cap of pride, but um, I I don't know the players as well in Europe. But the one thing I do know is every time I saw Sport Billy on Falstad, I knew there was going to be like some insanely good gust at some point in the game. And he just uh, his Medivh was great as well. He's actually one of the players in EU that when they when when he got picked up, I'm like, okay, this is a positive change because I think he's a he's a very good player. Um, so I don't know if they like I was saying, I don't know if the changes they've made are enough to catapult them back up there with the other big EU orgs, and are they going to compete with TB Determined? Are they are they going to leapfrog zealots? Are are they at least going to be better than tricked? I think that that that's the question to me. Um, tricked kind of they surprised in the first half of phase two. They kind of struggled towards the end there. They are firmly planted as a mid tier team. 
I I don't think I mean this list looks pretty good. It's just I would probably flip Tricked and Liquid. I would probably leave Zealots where they are. I think that uh, the previously Team Expert squad is going to be very good. I am not ready to ready to say that they're going to be better than the Fnatic we saw at GCWC, mm. but I think it's actually really, really close. I was, I'm not, I, I've, you know, I've kind of been, uh, I've already made it clear that I'm not a huge fan of the Fnatic changes. I, mm. I'm not, I don't really like the new roster. I... I like what we what, what the changes they made by picking up Arcaner and Schwimpy over uh, for the new TBD roster. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone's particularly close to Dig right now. I think the Dig roster has potential to get even better, and they've already shown to be really good. Uh, and ag- I agree with what you were saying earlier about Diamond Skin. I think that roster is better than what they've shown in Phase Two. It was just a kind of a bad luck. Now they they some, lost some three losses. players though as well. Yeah. Diamond Skin. So I, I don't know what that I mean they have they have the tank and support I believe still. Um, uh, I, they, yeah I they think, picked up Robo I think Nande is going to be role swapping because they picked up okay. Robo and I think right, he'll be right, tanking right. for them. And they um, and they did pick up like the EU version of Cure and Rostmeg. Right. So. It, but I mean we'll see. It's like th- this is the so I actually the Elo ratings do take into account roster swaps in that every team is worth twenty percent of their team's roster. Uh, so, you know, if if a team has a rating of 1,500, well, if a player leaves the team, they take their 300 points with them. And then whoever's added, let's say they're from a team that's 1,400, well, then their ELO rating goes down a little bit, you know, by about by about 20 or so. My cat is... There he is. <laughs> um, he came to say hi. Yeah. So this is this is Stuart. Uh, what yeah. is Stuart? <laughs> Um, and he's down. But yeah, the, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 Europe, I'm much less sure of, and it's just because Europe was already much deeper than North it's America. So yeah. And I think the roster swaps just take that depth and add chaos. And so I, I, I don't, other than like Dignitas and, and, and Fnatic being at the top of the league, I don't really have any expectations. Well, the other thing I want to point out, because Bags, you mentioning Tricked and Liquid could be swapped. There's only there's less than half a point between them um, in the in the voting for the power ranking. So they absolutely could have been the other way around. Um, right. But Diamond Skin is like a long. Th- then there's a point and a half between Liquid and Diamond Skin, mm-hmm. putting Diamond Skin like solidly in at seven. So I think the three through six is definitely fluid and i think what happens with leftovers will be interesting to see um but overall i think like otherwise it, it's like that three through six is that group that it is right um so struggling with words there okay and it's all good other than that i wouldn't there's not much i would change I, again i'd probably just flip liquid with tricked everything else is probably got to stay the same i think diamond skin will be competitive uh they did make a lot of changes though but i think they'll be competitive Leftovers, I'm afraid, is probably just the new good guys, and it's a shame because uh, I really like that roster. But we'll I don't see. know about that, man. I think this, I think leftovers I is even, better than Diamond It took the full seven for them to beat the good guys, <laughs> and it wasn't like dramatically like we are significantly better than this team, and that's we true. already saw what we got with the good guys. So I, right, that, well, I, that's what I'm basing that on. I wouldn't say like the good guys were certainly not even in death. The good guys took oh, no. Yeah, yeah, they weren't. Yeah, that. I mean that. So that, that's what I'm getting at is even if they were as good as good guys, that still doesn't mean they finish eight, seventh or eighth because it's just right. if a couple coin flips go your way, you know, you win two matches that you wouldn't otherwise, you know, in, in, a, in a best of five series while well, on map five, that ultimately there's some degree of luck involved. And so I, I just, I, I, I think Europe is just, Anyone saying that I think they if they have a good grasp on how three to eighth shakes out right now, I think they're just wrong. <laughs> no, it's, it's yeah. I, I hear you. It, it, that region, it's so competitive. It's so it's it's a coin flip. That's basically what it comes down to. It's and these are we're just kind of going right. with our gut on these as far as what we have to work with. Um. All right. So the last thing we have is the Elo. 
and yeah. it is wrong in one place, which is driving me nuts. So I'll look at changing that once I get it up. Um, do you want me to just share the screenshot you sent as we talk through that, or I didn't yeah, do a graphic that, for that? I mean, that that shows a little bit how the sausage is made, but that'll work. Okay. How that paste up? Oh, you know what? Uh, that. All right, give me a second, guys. Apparently, it didn't like that, so I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, while I make the sauce, I'm going to just flip us back here and, uh, so that nobody has to see me doing the weird stuff and, um, bags. Yes. <laughs> uh, can you, I'm sure you I have, feel, so, yes. Can I fill the air with words? Yep. Um, I, uh, I guess, how do you come up with like, how did you, how does uh, Latin America's way down there, huh? I guess it's basically yeah. what I, what I so, got out of this. So minor regions I treat as a team. Yes, but I the, lim I the limitation with this is they don't, they don't have nearly the same number of games as North America or Europe to work with. Right. Um, you know, every North American team I get at, like, you know, realistically in the neighborhood of, you know, they play seven best of fives average that out to uh, about four games each maybe a little less but so it's like i get 25 games per split and so that's a at, at minimum like i'm getting 100 games for every team in north yeah. america in europe in korea in china the minor regions especially because of the way blizzcon worked out this year where it was just a straight playoff uh they i only got you know like three games with yeah. with like not not that many i got i think it was like five games of data yeah. for red canids need that, need that round like, robin um and so because of this so msb actually helped because it actually confirmed some of the notions which is that i thought latin america was the worst minor region msb kind of showed that because at msb we had the round robin um whereas we saw that taiwan who had been able to pull up since in the past that they were actually pretty good. Uh, the limitation there, though, is because we're only seeing um, Taiwan, you know, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Latin America, the Southeast Asia region, because we only see those teams against the best teams from the other regions, it, it lowers their ELO a bit more than it probably should be. So, for example, if you were to play Taiwan against... Um, the best team in Taiwan, or let's go with the best team in Latin America, Red Canids, when they were there, against, say, China's start over again. Like, the ELO would say start over again would be favored. But that, I would be shocked if Red Canids lost to start over again. But right. where it's useful is when they're in international play, it approaches their actual win percentage. Keep in mind that if start over again took a map off KSV Black, let's say they play a best of five, and they take one map, even though KSV Black wins the Series 3-1, their ELO rating would plummet and Red Canids would go way up. Right. And the reason for that is it's, I do the ELO per map. And if KSV Black is, you know, more than 600 points ahead of Latin America, then they should 3-0 every time, no matter what. And anything less than that would be considered, okay, well, KSV Black is not as good as we thought they were. Latin America is not as bad as we thought it was. Um, but ultimately the international regions, yeah, they're, they're lower. And I think overall they tend to prove accurate at international play, but that's not to say that Latin America would lose to kudos top, for example. Cool. Also, I got it up and it's not showing the sauce. So I think we're good there too. Yeah. Um, hmm. so you know, the only things, and we and we kind of talked about it earlier, the only things that really jumped out at me looking at the whole list was how low the NA teams ended up rated, especially 12. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, there's still Roll20 in that because I haven't updated my uh, data files yet. The reason Roll20 is that low is they entered GCWC as, like, the sixth best team in the world, and they performed very poorly uh, relative to their expectations. Not Not... I mean, just relative to their own expectations, they said they did not perform as well as they wanted at GCWC. You know, they talk about how they scrimmed SPT like dozens of times and never dropped a map. Right. And then they get like immediately like 
O2'd off the stage against them in the playoff. But it's those losses because, again, they're taking the hit for the whole rest of North America. Um, you know, the GCWC games were worth, where a normal regular season game is 30, GCWC games were worth, I believe, 45. And so every time uh, Roll20 lost, they were penalized even more right. than they would be regular season but i think once you get about four weeks of north american play that they'll climb back up to where i think they should be okay um and then maybe even in like it depends on i think they only play two games in the first two weeks so right. it may take four weeks yeah okay um and then I'm trying to think if there's anything else that like really jumped out at me uh oceana being above um Latin America surprised me too. And I and I know I, we have so few games to like but I feel like Red Canids has like traditionally done better than um why am I going blank on the Australian team? Nomia or yes, Darkseid? Yes, Nomia, Nomia. And even Darksided. Mhm. Mm yeah, so that's Oceania because it's Australia New Zealand, that's just I called it that. And everyone else called it ANZ, and I'm really stubborn and bald, so I refuse to change it. <laughs> but I knew that's who you meant. I just I was surprised that yeah. they they ranked higher than Latin America when I I'm looking back I, today. I thought Latin America finished higher most times. Not typically. I, at 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 midseason brawl uh, at uh, Latin America Nomia went did oh and ten. Well, right. Yeah, right, Nomia right. managed to take a map off roll twenty. Um, they also took a map off. Uh, I, th I can't remember if they were Misfits or Team Liquid at the time at the first uh, Western oh, Clash. First Clash, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. everyone off guard. I yeah. think they, they almost still... won the second one too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they they took a map off, but they took a map off Misfits, who at the time was extremely hot. Um, That's true. so it's, okay. So that they they got some wins. I think Red Canids before BlizzCon. You have to go all the way back to. Um, Summer 16 was the last time they yeah. beat a major region. You're and right. that was they beat a Gale Force team where Michael Udall and Akaface had spent like the last like 24 hours stuck in Heathrow, Heathrow Airport. Right, 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 right. I remember so, that, yeah. which I've been stuck there for a long time and it sucks. <laughs> like, if you ever go to Heathrow, it's all shishi shops and everything. It's, it, it's, well, that's what Heathrow is, right? Yeah. I've, I've actually got it pulled up now. Nomia went, uh, they finished with five points in the group stage of the midseason brawl. Red Cannons uh, finished with zero. They didn't. Yeah. Okay. Didn't okay. I, I... The midseason brawl was a blessing. I really hope they do that format again. So much. I really want them to do that format again. Exactly that format. Yes. That format worked really. I well. I wanted BlizzCon to be that format as well. I think everybody did. Yeah. There's no honestly. But it's it, it's the they, physical the playoff stages is a the playoff stage is a, is a time issue. I, I will go off topic a little bit, but yeah, no, the playoff we... stage with that is 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 a time issue, obviously. But there's no reason why the group stage can't be a round robin. You can do two right. groups. I don't care. You can do two groups of eight. World Cup does it. Yeah. It's not a, exactly. not a problem. World Cup does it. Just, just, you could do it like the World Cup. Right, right. No, I, and I, it's like, if you need a sudden death, like, oh, just play a map. There right. you go. Sudden death, boom, one map, winner take all, move on. Yes, I agree. So. Um, okay, so in our show notes, we do actually have all of the... Elo ratings, I highlighted in yellow all the new teams so that you could tell those were new teams. Um, so if you're listening to this on the podcast, I'm not going to read off the 32 plus the four minor regions. Just check out the play or check out the um, notes or check out. I assume at some point you're going to write uh, post this as an article. So. Yeah, so I was going to get it up today, <laughs> but then I was hung over, so that didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> so, but, but. Uh, by the time you're listening to this podcast, there should be a post on Heroes Hearth by DB Smiley with these numbers in them in a uh, more um, formatted fashion. Um, so yeah. check it out there. Um, cool. Anything else either of you want to talk about with the ELO? I do just uh, want to okay. mention. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you, like, how, what, what do you do? You have like. Um... How do you crunch these numbers? Do you have like software? Are you yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, like this, this this screen you're looking at right now is a printout from Idle, uh, which is a Python editor. So I just like I even have the GitHub page for the code. It's GitHub.com/slash. I, I can't remember. It, yeah, it, how, it, how, it's been posted on my Reddit 
Yes. What's before. the time commitment for something like this? Like, are you are you bogged down trying to crunch these numbers, or do you just have to punch in like, um, the results mo- and it kind of does all the, the work time, for you? I just I just have a spreadsheet, so I have a Google sheet, and it's just like I list all the games, so it's the two teams involved, and I've created my own abbreviation system just to make it quicker. So like, Team Liquid is TL. Um, yeah. You know, Roll Twenty was R two, for example. So I just. I just basically, as I watch the games, like, oh, Roll20 won that map, so I add that to the list. Uh, and that's pretty much all I have to do. And then from there, I have, in addition to, so I have one mode of this software that just gives ELO numbers and another mode for simulation to, um, or uh, I have another mode for simulation to predict, like, who's going to go. I'm not going to run that mode yet. Because as mm-hmm. I said, I know the ELO numbers are not accurate. And if I simulate the results right now, it will be, you know, Tempo Storm's the highest rated team in North America. They'll be the favorite to go to the Western Clash. You know, um, Team Freedom second. They'll be second. Team 12 is third. They'll be third. It just because at that point when you're simulating with no games completed, it's just going to match up on your ELO results because of the round robin system. Uh, so I'm going to probably wait a week or two before I update that. Uh, the, the simulation results. But yeah, I, I, this is all built into the same software. I remember there was there, the only big time investment I had after I first wrote it and debugged it a few times was the way they did ties last season was actually rather confusing. Confusing enough that I, reading over the rules, came up with some incorrect interpretations. And so I had this like Twitter message back and forth with C.S. Steve um i remember those it, days man yeah and i was sitting there like in like every day i every like six hours i post like okay so i was wrong when i said this last time because now i talked and, and now it's this time and i remember it was something like we i had to keep going back and forth so my tie breaking rules matched um the ones they were using yeah. and so i really hope that if they change it again that they either take head to head out of the equation completely or they're more clear in how head-to-head is evaluated. Because that ended up being trick, was head-to-head evaluation. I just want them to release the rule. Yeah, I'm kind of still waiting on that. Uh, I'm, 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 best case scenario, they don't change tiebreakers, because then I don't have to change my code. Yeah, uh, that's, that's true. That's true. That, is, that is my top priority. So, all right. Uh, anything else? That's all I had. I was just kind of curious what kind of work went into it because I, you know, I know what kind of work goes into this. So, and that's right. his content. So it, just curious. It, the week, week to week, it's, it's very, it's very light load. I should note that I have a, a separate program for China because of how they do their model differently. And okay. what happened was I wrote a separate program to simulate mid season brawl. That was completely separate from my existing Python code. And, um, and I need to refresh Java, so I, I did it in Java. Well, what happened was China in Phase 2 basically did the mid-season brawls format. So then I did China separate from the from the rest of HGC. Um, Korea technically has different tiebreaker rules, I think, <laughs> as well. But I don't have them programmed. And the odds of me figuring out how they work. And I just, I, I took like... I knew they were wrong by the end of phase one because in phase one, like according to the tiebreaker rules I had, um, Tempest should have been third and Mighty should have been fourth and Mighty was third and Tempest was fourth. And I just never fixed it. And I'm just yeah. always adding a caveat. Like I don't speak Korean. I don't know where any of their rules are. It's not my problem. <laughs> well, this, is like, as as can get. this is a good example of Korea and China both follow similar rules, but they're not identical rules. So Korea is much happen. closer to NA and EU. China's obviously they've they've completely done their own model. Right, right. Which I I actually prefer their model. Oh, I, I love also... the Chinese model. The Chinese model is great. Yeah. Um, I definitely would rather see us. I would it's rather a lot see like all three gaming series. So you know, <laughs> if you're interested in the Chinese model, that's a good. And plug. maybe want to play as play in a in an amateur league, maybe check out Nexus Gaming Series, or maybe see uh see some of the games being casted. That was a, that was a great plug actually. That, that was. That was perfect. Yes, it was. All right. so. <laughs> I think um I think we're gonna end it here. Of course I just closed the thing. It gives me all the stuff that I this. All right. <laughs> there we go. Thank you all for listening to Troll and HEC, a weekly podcast about Here's the Storm Esports, a member of the Trolls GG Entertainment Network. We stream live on our Twitch channel. 
um, at 7.30 p.m. Tuesdays, uh, that has changed. We used to be at 9.30 p.m. Wednesdays. However, now we've moved our show to 7.30 p.m. Tuesdays, Eastern Time, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Having said that, our next show is actually 9.30 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. We will have Gillyweed on uh, to discuss NA preview and dig into each team's and see how she feels about these power rankings. Um, so check that out. Ask her if she wants to do the media poll. Oh, I'm, I it will same, be brought up. I, grand, I, I will be asking both her and Caldor if they want nice. to uh, participate. Yeah. Yes, I, w- I will bring it up. Don't worry. Um, with that said, <laughs> DB Smiley, you have any shout outs or where can people find you? Uh, yeah, just a shout out to Nexus Gaming Series. It's honestly been a lot of fun. Uh, shout out to you guys. I was really happy that you kind of took uh, took the ball in and kept it rolling uh, liquid when you when you put this together. And you've, you've done a fantastic job uh, with the podcast. So thanks to both of you for having me on. And then, uh, yeah, just twitter.com slash death by smiley. It's not DB smiley. There's a Darlene Brown smiley. And she tweeted once. And I think it was something about law and order SVU. And that is that is not me. Um, so it's I know that struggle. Smiley. I know that. And struggle. then, well, though, no, like GFE tagged me like three times as that DB smiley at one point, <laughs> which I don't blame them. Just, and I'm, I'm not like trying to throw shade at all. That was just it was something that was funny. It was CSI. Um, it was CSI, but she's still CSI, out there. CSI, okay. Her, one, her... one 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 of those acronym <laughs> shows, right? They're all the same. Um, and then uh, Twitch.tv slash DB smiley. I mostly just use that for casting Nexus Gaming series, and occasionally I get drunk and stream when I really shouldn't, uh, and I and I say and I say fuck a lot, and that is that is the extent of of my casting. All right, bags. Where can people find you, uh, guys? You can follow me on Twitter at bagshgc because at bags is taken by some lady who doesn't really tweet <laughs> either, and it's just frustrating. Um, so it's bags hgc. You can watch me stream on twitch.tv slash bags where um, I'll actually be streaming tonight here, hopefully around 8 o'clock now that I've got my internet issues sorted out. Um, and I just heroes, whatever I'm feeling that night, whatever's froggy. Um, also, if you enjoyed tonight's show and are interested in Blizzard's other esports offerings, consider subscribing to the Weekly Blizz on iTunes, where my buddy Guaz and I cover all of Blizzard esports. And uh, it can be found on all podcast sources. Liquid, where can people follow you? So you can find me at Twitter is the best place, at LiquidGG. That's L-I-Q-I-U-D-G-G. I tweet whenever I'm going to do anything, whether it's this show, whether it's streaming some stuff, which I am getting back into streaming, or just in general anything else. So follow me there. Thank you to all of the Patreon supporters that we have. If you enjoy this show and you want to support us, you can do so at Patreon or in a number of other ways, following us on Twitter at TrollinHCC. You can subscribe on YouTube. That's youtube.com forward slash trolls gg or subscribe follow us on twitch twitch.tv forward slash trolls gg we also put our shows out on itunes google play stitcher and all other podcast sources check those out also check out our website at www.trolls.gg we have a number of authors now writing various articles and trying to keep up with all the news that's going on uh need to get in touch with us twitter dms are always open or you can email us at trolling at trolls.gg Thank you, everybody, for joining us in chat. Thank you, DB Smiley, for coming on the show. It was a lot of fun to go over the rankings and the ELO. And thank you, as always, Bags. We will see you guys in the Nexus. Peace out. Thank you for having me. Take care.